So welcome to part two, and it's pretty much a continuation of part one, except that I'm really trying to organize the polys to complement the form or how I see the form. And I'm doing that by establishing polygroups. And polygroups is just a way of selecting and isolating various polys inside of ZBrush. But by doing that and having a different color for them, I can now see a particular panel, in this case, the body side a bit more clearly. I can see the edge loops, those lines in the surface, and compare them more easily with the other lines without the other panels in their way. So I'm looking at this panel, I'm comparing it to the center or the top line, and I'm looking at it and I'm comparing it to the section and the plan views of the other lines below it. All of that, all of those relationships are very important in poly modeling, as is, is in uh, nerves modeling too, but by doing and organizing those lines, you have a better highlight. You'll have much better highlights when they make sense. Those or the organization of vertices and edge loops makes sense. And so this is what I'm doing most of all uh, in this section. There's other considerations too. Uh, the poly, the way the polys are organized, not just the way they relate, but the way they are organized, the way the edge flows work. Um, can complement or not complement the forms that are established or you want to establish. In this case, I can see that the front end, these big flares in the front are not really complementing the form. As it is, the form should be where uh, you have this huge volume in the center or the main body and these flares, flares or pantoons or are attached on very clearly to this the to the center and the way it is now they're not so much and so i'm working this area this flare the front flare so that the polys will essentially wrap around to the front instead of over and waterfall and instead of waterfalling down the front um, down the front flare and so there's going to be a little bit of working deleting some polys creating some new ones using Z modeler, but using that to delete edge loops, add creases, I'll be able to get the polys to wrap as I want them to wrap. Right now I'm selecting polys. It's a temporary selection of polys using uh, Z modeler. And that way I can reassign those different colors. I can hide them and again, organize the polys in the way that I need to. I'm trying to connect this one to that. So that's now connected. Now I'm just connecting these two together. I think we're going to have to delete this one right there. And then now we can just connect those two together. That's one huge poly on the top, but at least the organization is a much better actually than before. I need to organize this so that re that remains more circular. As you can see, it's, it's sort of flat on top. And now when we subdivide it or dynamically subdivide it, you can see that there's a very clear flow. The highlight is very clearly flowing around from the rails, the side rails toward the top of the hood there. And this is exactly what I want. I'm not sure if the designer intended that in his sketch, but this is how it evolved in the model that I'm building. Actually, as I look at his model, I can see that I would do it a, a different way if I were doing it again. 
it's approaching clarity, at least in this, this section here. So we're approaching the end, and I will see you in section three. Okay, so this is the last part as it pertains to the body. And uh, I'm still adjusting various intersections using the um, crease intersections or the crease theoreticals as a guide. It's really about just looking around the whole model and just making sure everything relates. There's still the bottom that I have to correct. There's a wheel lip in the back that needs some attention and also the front needs some attention. There's a poly group that's not complete. So I'm taking that and creating one poly group for the wheel lip here and then hiding everything but that and then making sure that it fits the wheel lip on the sketch. I know the other side is not quite, but I'll just end up flipping it anyway, so I'm not really worried about that. Now I'll adjusting it while it's while it's smooth, dynamically smooth that is, and then flip the other side. Now I'm using the clip curve just to make it straight, at least vertical, all vertical, and then the uh, transpose to and do a disproportionate scale or move. I'll do the same thing in the back here. First, making sure that it fits the wheel lip. And then now I have to create some material, some poly material to create that lip because there was none there. So I'm doing this by bridging to it covers the whole thing. And then I'll use the modeler to inset this and then I'll have that material for the wheel lip by deleting everything else but the wheel lip. And then I can do the same thing that I did for the front. That is, make sure that it completely fits the sketch. And that's just using the move tool. And then while that's off, I want to make sure nothing has gotten distorted. And then I'll take that, mask it, and then flip it and do the same thing that I did with the front, with the rear. Now I'm adjusting the rear, uh, the bottom, the rocker, and I've masked the vertices at the bottom and then use the transpose to, that is the new transpose to, to scale toward the bottom. Still making sure that the plan views and all views look right. Now there's a little issue with the rocker, but what I'm going to end up doing there is now creating some material at the bottom, bridging uh, both sides of the model, at the bottom that is. And that'll give me some material to do an edge loop through so that I'll have uh, some material to adjust. So once I've done that, I can create an edge loop right at the bottom there. It's just an insert and then delete everything but that, right? And so I've, I've got this and all I have to do now is orient that so that so that it, um, it now fits the sketch. Using the scale to the move to just get that just right, the angle just right. And to, to keep that, that edge tight, I'm gonna put an edge loop around that at the bottom. First, making sure that the uh, is creased all in the right places there.
adjusting the character line at the bottom. And then now, um, putting edge loops around the wheel lip to keep those tight. And also around the top of the uh, rail, the front glass. So we want a softer radius around there. So I'm keeping the edge loops rather uh, distanced at the top. Now there's still some tight edges around the window, the wheel flares uh, in the front and the rear, but I am going to take those and transpose those into loops, bevels that is, as you can see there. They still, they're still kind of tight, so I need to kind of uh, adjust those, put some distance between those, because the, the closer the distance between an edge loop generally means that the tighter the crease or the tighter the edge. So I don't want it to be tight near the rear, the center line, Y0. So I'm increasing the distance uh, and changing the attitude, the angles, and so forth. So now that inside view, it's not as tight in that area. In fact, I don't want it to be tight at all. So I'm still adjusting that and making sure that that reflects the design intent. The same thing goes for the front. I'll take that, the green edge loop there, the green portion, the poly loop, and I'm increasing the distance between those two so that that can also remain softer as opposed to something very tight. I've hit some poly groups so that I can see the center line more clearly, else it would have been hard to adjust Y0. Adjusting the plan view, adjusting from the uh, front view. Making sure that it's just right in all views. And so I think we've got something in right now. I can pretty much take this to Alias or um, Maya or any other package and continue it. But right now I'm going to take this and add some more subdivisions. And this time this is not dynamic. I'm actually dialing in some subdivisions so that I can put some more detail and refine the surface even further. pulling down the front so that it, the front uh, valence, the front putting some angle to it and making sure that that reflects the, uh, the angle or the rocker angle as it moves around to the front, somewhat at least. Putting an edge loop there so that that can remain tight or tighter at least. So when I dynamically subdivide that, it still is sort of tight. But I'm not really dynamically subdividing it in the end. I'm going to add some more subdivisions here so that I can now model it like a typical ZBrush model. That is using the clay brush, clay buildup brush, just to put some more section in certain areas. And I'm able now to do that because there's so much more geometry there by subdividing it. This is not dynamically subdivided now. This is actually subdivided by pressing Control D as opposed to just D uh, on the keyboard. So I'm using the pinch curve here to um, put some crease, a tighter crease there. And I'm constantly smoothing just to make sure that I, I'm not putting any undue, unneeded lumps and bumps in the surface. Doing a little bit in the back, and I think we're 
approaching uh, the end of the body, at least, at least the general surface. We'll put some detail in it later, maybe a door cut or two, do some wheels, glass, and then we'll just uh, throw it in maybe key shot and see how it is. But right now it's fairly close. I Like I said earlier, I would have done it a little differently, but as it is, this is what we have right now. See you in the next video.